during the yeah. harvest. Yeah. Did you guys deliver? Thank you guys you. have had me up, up like a couple times a month at least. At least. Right? Yeah, it's great. Love you Thank guys. You. Yeah. So I wanted to introduce Chef Ben here. Welcome him. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us. Thank you for having me. So I'm excited to be here and cook some paella for everybody. Yeah. Let's do it. All right, let's get started. So I got a little, uh, this is a 20, uh, two inch pan I've got and a, one of the smallest little paella burners I can find. I think they make one smaller. We're gonna fire this thing up right now. So just a countertop. Countertop, it comes with leg stands so you can hold it up. Oh, cool. um, or cook right here, like in the backyard or whatever you need. Uh, you might wanna get some windscreens for it uh, if you do that because the wind will blow that flame right out. Right now, I'm gonna start with a nice high uh, heat, and we're gonna add some olive oil. Nice, good amount. Right. <laughs> and then I have here diced chicken thighs with smoked paprika, salt, and olive oil to flavor, and I just put that in a Ziploc bag and let it sit for overnight. Add that, so we could get a little hotter in the pan, but we're, we want to cook, so let's cook. And then you do this when you cater, right? Like you'll come do paella on site, like start to finish, so everybody can kind of see it. I do, smell I do. it, and yeah. then wolf it down. Uh, the reason we have wood fired in the name of the paella catering company is because I usually do it over wood fire. Oh, cool. So uh, I usually have it where it's um, a pan about 35 to 40 inches and we do it for parties of 40 or more outside yeah. that way I get a nice big fire going and uh, great heat and it's really nice and fun and you get a lot of that smoke developed comes over the pan into the paella as you're cooking everything nice. so it's really nice so once we like open back up and we can actually invite you all here um, we're definitely going to get Ben back out and Zuzu would fire paella to do the big one for a yeah. You guys have done that before. It's so delicious and really fun to watch. So this is kind of like a mini countertop version, but just as fast. Yeah, in fact, I also want to work on a smaller vessel so I can, because, you know, we might not be able to get together for, you know, 10 or more people soon. So if we can get 10 to 15 people together, I want to be able to cook for 10 to 15 people over wood fire at your place. Oh, cool. And hopefully we can bring that all together and have fun with that too. I love it. Um, I got my chicken sizzling nice right here. It's doing exactly what you want it to do. Splattering uh, you know, the oils everywhere. And I like to get a good sear on this chicken. Um, to speed things up, I'm going to put my chicken to half this pan. Uh, I add a house ground chorizo sausage. This is a pork based sausage with cumin, coriander, oregano, and paprika, salt, a uh, little sherry. Um, we're gonna add that right in there. It's really fatty and nice. It's gonna add great flavor. This is a Spanish style ground chorizo. When you say paprika, I know there's all these fancy paprikas. Does it matter, what do you like? Uh, I should have brought a bag in, but we use, uh, Spanish style smoked paprika and sweet paprika. So I do a combination of both, which is right here in my uh, oh, thing. So it has both paprikas in it. Okay. Uh, while that's cooking, we do use a Spanish chorizo sausage. This is the uh, Palacios. Uh, this is actually the not spicy one. So there's spicy and mild. This is a mild one. And how spicy is the spicy one? Just, you know, enough to get you a little heat on your All right. You're not actually breathing fire. Buns. No, no, no. Okay. You don't, that's not Spanish food. You don't want Spanish food to be hot burning. Right, right, right. So I'm just gonna chop this up. Is this something you find like in a nice grocery store, like a Whole Foods? I believe or? Whole Foods has it. Okay. Uh, I bet um, your, uh, you know, fine restaurants probably have it. Um, people will use other sausages that, uh, you know, I don't quite find quite Spanish, but you know, it's it's great. What if you like those ingredients, like linguiça or whatnot? You know, but you can 
speak up to people I, on that? I, I can't, but you can. Okay. <laughs> Thank yeah, that's really good. And this is really nice and bright from the smoked paprika and how they age it in Spain. Good fat content, red wine. Uh, they just do a great job. And how long would it age like that before? I think they age these probably um, maybe under two months, three months okay. under that. It's, it's pretty, pretty quick. It's pretty fresh. Yeah. But this is not a company, I don't know exactly how long they uh, go for. So we'll just put that right in there. Give that a nice stir. Oh, this is just adding flavor to everything in here. Keep. Now, the sausage that you make that you brought today, or sorry, the chorizo that you made that you yes. brought today, um, remind us again what all is in that. So you can, you can just get some um, pork sausage, ground pork, and uh, spice it up with uh, cumin, coriander, uh, oregano, garlic, salt, and paprika. Oh, okay. Very simple. Nice. Very simple. Check our heat. We've got a nice heat going. Crank it down just a little bit. And let's cut up some bells and get those in there. I'm just going right around. I'm not going to get too clean with it. And how long have you been, uh, been the paella man? Uh, so I've been cooking paella for about 10 years okay. with uh, Zuzu. I love it. Um, yeah, it's been a it's great development. I've been with Zuzu for 18 years. Total? Yeah, cool. yeah. Like that place. It's fun. The atmosphere is fun. You know, great place for first dates. So you get a lot of people who come in there and, oh my God, you were my bartender when we met 10 years ago. Aww. It's really nice to be part of that, uh, you know, wholesome experience. Definitely like a true local, uh, local spot in Napa. When we go in, like, you see everybody you know at the bar and hanging yeah. you know, out, having dinner on a random Tuesday night. It's almost like you're walking into Cheers, huh? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of our staff has been there for a long time as well. Um, we, don't, uh, we don't lose a lot of people very quickly, so it's almost like a home within a home. Absolutely. Which I feel a lot of the... Uh, a lot of the restaurants in the valley are like that, especially now, you know, talking to different people and seeing different people on Zoom and how they come together uh, with their restaurant employees and coworkers is really cool. We've done our, uh, our Christmas party with you guys, and so all of the shame goes over to Zuzu and hangs out on the second level uh, for the Christmas lunch every year. Really, really yummy. All right, one more pepper, and we'll give this thing another stir. these peppers it just gives nice flavor and uh, some good color to everything it's just, it's just like a bright a little, yeah and it gives it a little pop do you have a garden at home yeah actually I do uh, this year is pretty light it's just herbs and I just started some tomatoes um, we surprisingly grow some uh, gigantic watermelon uh, one came up last year, it was about 40 pounds. Oh, I got five 40 pound watermelons off of it. Are these seeds that you like collect? Like, no. Special, this or? one came up just on its own from oh, us. Uh, so volunteers? Yeah, volunteers? exactly. Volunteers. 40 pounds, that's bananas. It was huge. It's like this big, oh, you know? Lord. All right. So look at those lovely colors we got going in there. Cook that all down. No jumping out. All right. Smelling good. 
that down. Let's go ahead and add some tomato to that. I got about a cup worth, maybe a little more here. Put that in there. And then I have a sofrito, where I basically just took an onion, chopped it up, added some, oh, 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 oh Chris, added some saffron to it, and I just have a nice bag of saffron here. I took a nice pinch out of that, added it to that, and you get that nice, that nice color in there, that golden gold. So we're gonna add that right there to it. Put that right on top. There's nothing that tastes like saffron. Oh, so good. So cool. And with this paella, I put saffron in the uh, sofrito, and I put saffron in the uh, stock itself when I make my paella stock. Oh, cool. This is harissa. We make our own harissa. Fresno chilies, um, cilantro, cumin, um, garlic, and then a little sherry vinegar. Let's take a nice little spoonful of that. Put it right on top. It's going to add some great heat to that. Let's get this stirred up some more. How many different paellas do you do? Like if someone looked at your paella menu, is it like? We do, let's see, five paellas. So this one we're doing today is the Zuzu Paella Mista. Okay. Chicken, two types of sausage, all the garden vegetables. And we're going to top it with mussels and plants. Okay. I also do a all seafood paella, which would be with a, a fish stock. Sorry. Uh, fish stock, um, and then I do rockfish, shrimp, calamari, mussels, and clams on that. We also can do that with a squid ink stock, so that would be the aros negra, which is the black paella, black rice, aros negra. So we take the squid ink and the rice, and we put that as our stock. And then I do a, uh, a vegan California vegetarian paella, so deep. Uh, mushroom stock, um, mushrooms, and any vegetable that's in season. Uh, Eggplant, egg asparagus, water, asparagus like all that good stuff. stuff that yeah, good. yeah. So I have the base of this ready to go. So right now, uh, a lot of people like to stir their um, rice in now, but we don't do that uh, at the restaurant or or at the catering, I should say. This is our paella stock. It's a chicken stock base. And then we take a mirepoix of vegetables and saffron, cook those down into it, add the stock, puree that up, and then that becomes our okay. stock. All right. We're just gonna go ahead and add that. It helps if you have it heated on the pan a little bit uh, on the stove top. Uh, it'll uh, come to heat much faster. I save just a little, just in case I need more. Um, but like I say, when I do events, I don't have that option because I just solely over the fire. So I add this and I let it come over to, up to temp. And once it comes to a simmer, then I add my rice. Got it. So you want the whole thing simmering? Yes. And to season it, we're going to take a couple little teaspoons of that smoked paprika. And then, can't use a spoon with salt, you got to pinch it. Yeah, get that salt in there. Remember, salt is your friend. Start with about three pinches, and then go from there. Let that salt really get in your stock. The moment you think you have too much salt is the best way to cook paella. The rice will absorb all the extra salt. But you don't want to go, you know, over the top either. Okay. You add more, but you can't take it out. That's right. Oh, my. I'm not messing with it. All right, so while we're waiting for that, We'll uh, add the rice as soon as this comes to a little simmer. Okay. You want to talk wine? Sure. Well, cheers. Thank you again for coming. 
Oh, do we have a question? No. Okay. Um, we're going to turn our music down a little bit so that you can hear us really clearly because we have all the, the bubbling and, and uh, uh, searing noises of the paella pan. Um, let's see, we're going to talk wine. So I pulled out two different wines to pair with this because I think you can go red, white, pink. Um, there's so much that goes with paella because there's so many different things you can put into paella. This is the 2019 uh, Van Gris. Van just being a fancy term. Um, from Burgundy for a uh, Pinot Noir uh, Rosé. So that 2019, um, I bottled four weeks ago? Three, oh. three, four weeks ago? Like it's, Fairly recent. Yeah, no, it's yeah. new. Um, maybe four weeks ago now. Um, so we're just um, about to release it. And what we love about uh, the Van Gris is that it's completely dry. There's no uh, like residual sugar. It's, it's a dry wine, but there's a lot of juiciness and, and like, nectarine uh, watermelon sort of um, flavors on the mid palate. So something really, really fun and um, fresh and juicy, which kind of balances. It's like a yin yang with, uh, with the spice from the paella. So all that spice and, and the beautiful sausage and the crazy chorizo um, balanced out with something that's got a real freshness and like a, a nectarine, like uh, fresh guava and watermelon quality to it. Um, Plus, because the wine has no residual sugar in it, uh, and it has a really uh, tight minerality and really tight acidity to it, it cuts through some of that pork fatness. Oh yeah, right? yeah, hundred percent. And so the the sort of yin yang of, of freshness and spice is really fun. And then the other wine that I pulled out um, is the 2017 G Vineyard Pinot Noir. So this G Vineyard Pinot Noir, I was telling Ben, comes from vines that uh, were planted in 1981, 1984. They're dry farmed, uh, so there's no irrigation on them. They're head trained, there's no trellis, there's nothing that holds the vine up. So it, it's kind of like a Pinot Noir Bad Hair Day. It's got a <laughs> trunk that's like this big around that comes up to about here and then it's just got shoots all over the place. And some of them are three feet long and some of the shoots are eight feet long and each vine sort of does what it does in a very uncontrolled, organic-y environment. Uh, they were hand planted and they were hand watered when they were first put in five gallon buckets on a vine, you know, from the back of a, of a tractor. Dr. G's kids were doing it. Um, but at this point, completely dry farm, the roots went really deep, fine water out here in Carneros on top of our clay layer. And this is one of our spicier pinots. So this has a nice um, spice component, really cool like mushroom tones um, that I think is more uh, balance as far as a red wine with paella, that spice from the wine and the spice from the paella go really, really well together. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, pinots are great with paella. Yeah. And that sounds yeah. like uh, um, we were in Priorat and they did a lot of their vines just on the side of the hill, mm -hmm. let's go, just basket in, the fill the basket, basket out. Yep. All right, let's go ahead and add okay. some rice to this. Yeah. Everything's really doing nice. So I'm just going to go around the edges. Some Important to get this evenly spread everywhere. So you're literally dumping it in as even as you can. Yeah. The outside swirling in. Okay. Like that. And we'll just give it a little push, push the rice, get it to the bottom. So you judge it around, but it's not like a mix. No, you don't okay. want to stir. It's not risotto. Okay. So risotto, you stir, you stir, you stir. This paella, this is all I'm going to do right now is just kind of push the rice around. That's it. Let it settle. Now I want to get the heat adjusted because it's a little high. And I don't want to develop a sakurat too fast. And the sakurat. Sakurat is the caramelization to the bottom of the pan. Uh -huh. So as you're cooking it, the rice is evaporating the stock and then it builds a crust on the bottom of the pan. Got it. And then that is the sacred, which Spaniards say. Okay. And it, as long as you don't scorch it too bad, you're doing it just right. So crispy so, brown. Crispy brown, but not even it can be even dark, dark, dark brown. But as soon as you get the black, black, then you've got a little too much. So next time, just ease off the heat a little bit. Let it just simmer, let it do its thing. So gentle. Yeah. Gentle. Yeah. Body. And this right here, if we can't finish in time, will take 
uh, about 20 to 30 minutes like this. And you watch it as it has yeah, different as we talk, because the rice will just... Yeah, as we point. talk, we'll be able to see this go down. Okay. Um, another thing I want to do is add shellfish to this. A lot of people cook their shellfish on the side uh -huh. and then put it over their finished paella. I like to put my shellfish right in. Let's do I'll that. Show you how. All right. Man, it smells really, really good in here, like no joke. These guys are definitely gonna come back for a party here, so make sure you're on our email list so we can send you party invites. Um, there will be a time that we can all get together again. We miss you all, uh, and we are definitely, uh, definitely gonna be enjoying some paella together, so make sure you sign up for our list. So I got some uh, Prince Edward Island mussels right here. Beautiful. I don't get fancy, I don't make drawings, I just kind of put it around, okay? All right. And then we have the uh, manila clams. Beautiful. They're wonderful. So the reason I put them in the paella with the stock in it, because the stock's going to open up the shellfish. Sure. And the shellfish are going to grab a little bit of stock, and that'll keep them moist as opposed to drying out um, in different pans when you just cook them with olive oil or something like that. These will open up and stay moist and they'll start talking any second you hear them start to pop open yeah, yeah. i love it especially when it's quiet okay <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool oh i dig it do we have a question brian uh somebody's just wondering what a review of uh, a review of the ingredients in the pan Certainly, okay. certainly. Okay, so, so we're going to do a quick review of what we've actually put into the pan. We started off with uh, chicken thighs that have been diced, marinated with paprika. It's a smoked paprika, um, salt, and olive oil. Uh, you let that sit overnight, but you can let it sit just for an hour or so. Um, then we have uh, a house-made chorizo sausage that we make in-house. It's pork, uh, pork sausage with cumin, coriander, garlic, um, and smoked paprika and salt. Then we have the chorizo sausage, the Spanish hard chorizo sausage, bell peppers, sofrito, that was the caramelized onions with saffron and olive oil, and um, the harissa and the stock. Awesome. So, and remind yeah. us what the harissa is again, because you make oh, that too, right? Yes, uh, Fresno chilies. Okay. And then I cook that down with garlic, cumin, and cilantro, and uh, a little sherry, uh, uh, not sherry, uh, sherry, champagne vinegar, vinegar at okay. the end. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. And then I have some little piquillo peppers here for the end paella as well. Cool. Yes. So you were saying when we first put the rice in and kind of judged it a little bit to get it to settle, that at that point it's 20, 30 minutes? Mm -hmm. Dish? Okay. Yeah. Uh, if, what was that? I don't know what that was. I don't either. <laughs> Interesting. I think maybe one of our lights went out. So we're just going to keep going. <laughs> so the seafood then pops. Uh, so the seafood goes in with about 20 minutes left to go. Also, As well, yeah. Because okay. you want that stock to be able to kind of get in the sides of the, as it opens, it's gonna grab stock and keep the muscle okay. fresh or the clam got fresh. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, cool beans. I'm gonna grab two more bowls. Okay. So then we have uh, green onions and asparagus, yum. I love it. We're gonna also, gonna also talk about um, the book that they have put together. So this has got a lot of really cool pictures in it of different, uh, different uh, paellas that they've made and, and uh, some of the live wood fire cooking that they do. So you guys yeah, got That one's the best. Oh, that's a good yeah, picture Yeah, so if you right get a there. shot of that picture, that is. That's how it's done on when we're out on the field. Yeah? Yeah. So it's basically this, this wood fire um, setup. And is this a setup that you guys put together or? Yeah, a friend of mine, a fabricator, had it uh, built for me. If I can give a shout out to Fog, Fog, Fog Fabs, Mark Fogarty. Awesome. Does all our metal work for us. Oh, cool, cool. Really great guy. Um, and then this is going to be our fresh vegetable topping. Just asparagus. Beautiful. Some, uh, what are those? Green onions. Green onions. <laughs> Let's do it. 
at least. I'm gonna usually have a little mandolin I shave, but that's okay because a lot of people don't. So we're just gonna give it a nice thin chop with the asparagus. It stays nice and sweet if you keep it um, raw and thin. And will it maintain a little crunch, or are you trying to cook it to a point? No, I'm not cooking soft? it. I'm cooking putting it. It's the very last thing we're gonna okay, add. Got it. Nice. So, fresh green pop. Yeah, green, crunchy. I always like to have a little crunch. I'll use like uh, summer squash, zucchini, peas, uh, green beans, sugar snap peas, anything with a crunch that tastes great. You know, raw. You don't have to cook. Oh, cool. Um, and just sprinkle it on top. Yeah. As it finishes. Awesome. During the winter, uh, I know when we started doing stuff earlier this winter. I resorted to doing uh, a quick blanch of um, uh, uh, broccolini, oh, uh, yeah. you know, just a quick yeah, blanch yeah, of that yeah. and just kind of with salted water, so put it right over the top and then that was good too because it added a whole different uh, kind of element to the vegetable. Nice. That's nice. Like that. thing about paella is it's all these different layers of, of spice and, and meats and flavors and then with the fresh veg component too and like you're saying the crunch on top versus yeah. the sort of succulent sausage. Yeah unless you're asking true Valencians then um, this is just rice with stuff in it this is not paella they're very offended um, but we do the best we can we are in Napa Valley so we have to have the yeah. best and biggest flavors that we can do here otherwise uh, we don't and get our growing that. season might be a bit longer as far as vegetables that are offered and right, that right. out there, right? Right, yeah. So, but uh, Valencians are like true to their nature where this is the only ingredients. I don't even know if they put chorizo in there. It's rabbit, chicken, snails, um, vegetables. The stock is made in the pan. Okay. We make our stock, you know, 24 hour chicken stock into a, another 12 hour paella stock. So it's, it's a, quite a bit of stuff that goes into our stock. Um, but uh, they have a way. They, they the do it way. right in the pan, and that's the only way to do it. And we're doing it wrong. <laughs> well, this wrong way tastes absolutely delicious. It does. <laughs> and I like that you offer a few different types too, so that people can uh, have sort of like a pescatarian version. Or yeah, and it's nice too because uh, all, every pie is gluten free already. And then the vegetarian is gluten free to start, and then you add nothing but delicious California vegetables in it, and you're good to go. Love it. I'll keep this right up to the side right here. As you can see, it is already starting to cook down a bit. My fire is looking good. We're going to do a test. This is the pan test, I like to call it. You're testing for metal when you hear metal. And you'll see as we go on, pretty soon we won't hear any metal, we'll hear just the rice caramelized rice. to the pan. It'll be a thud instead of a, a, a tink. That's so wild. But yeah, we're not stirring it at all. Just let it all soak out. Yes, yes. Cool things. And then, uh, yeah. What else do you want to talk about? We got a couple of minutes now. Well, can we talk about Zuzu and La Taberna and the, yeah. the um, wood fire paella and how it's like the triumvirate of deliciousness that yeah. are all sort of separate? So uh, we opened Zuzu in 2001, 2002. Okay. Uh, Mick Salier, uh, myself, um, a handful of other people. Charles Weber was the chef at that time. Um, and just with the idea of bringing fresh Spanish flavors to Napa Valley and Spanish wines, which we, you know, were really hard to find back then. You know, everybody was drinking uh, French wines, Italian wines, and Chilean wines, and New Zealand wines. There's very little, any other, any little Spanish wines. So that really brought all the winemakers and people to us because they were really interested in drinking Albarinos, Tempranillos, Pre you get this crazy list, like yeah. all kinds yeah. of really cool producers, and then a bunch of producers no one's ever heard of that are incredibly delicious. Yeah, super fun, super fun. Um, uh, so about you know ten years into that, maybe eight years into that, we decided uh, Mick and I and the chef at the time, Angela Tamura, we were cooking uh, 
papayas or the fire in the backyard and try to figure that out and decided that you know we should do this for, for friends and uh, you know bring it to people's backyards which turned into we should turn this into a business so after about four or five years of going through that uh, I decided to head the project with Mick backing me um, and said I told him I said I would love to do everything I would like to make all the stock uh, cut the chicken, do everything, clean the pans, do the cooking. Make your chorizo. Wonderful. Bag, right? All of it. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, so with his backing, I went through that, that and put myself through uh, kind of working with him to make it happen so we could have a business out of it. And, you know, really started really, you know, tightening up our technique and getting it down to science and having fun with it. That's so cool. And you, um, and part of the team are in Spain frequently, right? Yeah. We're just doing kind of some re research. Sure. Yeah. yeah, research, <laughs> research. And we try to go to a different research place say, each year. So uh, we just kind of rejuvenate, get you marinating on yeah, your ideas. Yeah, and which is really nice because we kind of really, you know, get into the local culture, you know, tapas, vino, um, repeat. <laughs> there you go. It's a perfect trip. Yes, yes. And we've been to about, uh, we've got five times now oh, welcome. yeah we try to go every year this year we did not go and yeah, sure. we, I'm so glad we didn't right <laughs> yeah it's uh, uh, unfortunate it's sad but, uh, there, yeah. and then when did La Taberna open up uh, ooh, it was years and now 20 so wow. 2015 okay. Okay. yeah, yeah I think so um, and that was developed by one of our trips to Portugal and San Sebastian, trying to get those smaller pinchos together, uh, big flavors, smaller bites, an atmosphere where you can be with friends and family uh, and just stand up and relax and have a glass of wine and a bite. And you know, you can stay four hours, you can stay 20 minutes, but that's what it's supposed to be. It's not sit down dining, it's it's, it's atmosphere, small bites, packed yeah. With a ton of flavor, Get the perone, and still some like crazy uh, 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 European wines, Spanish oh, wines, like even, all these like wild, yeah, even wine geekier than yeah. uh, than the uh, Zuzu and spirits. Yes, yeah, so we're doing the Portuguese uh, Portugal's classic uh, uh, Porto Tonico, which is uh, Dow's white tiny port with tonic and lime there you go. boom that and it's all you need all you need i can see little uh pockets of rice popping yeah out. i just want to give it a little churn because my pan has been used so much as a little uneven there we go but it's doing what exactly what we want it to do Should we uh, introduce the Perone? Yeah, so um, <laughs> Ben brought something amazing that uh, I'm gonna let him talk about and All right. demo. This is the one you brought from home, right? This is so my, like I brought this personal. from my own personal cupboard. It's been sitting there for six months or so and I dusted it off, put it through the washing machine and here we are. I actually brought this home from Barcelona, no myself in, in my own bag. And this is the Perone. It's, Got rosé in it right now, but a great wine to drink out of it is like an Albarino or a Chocolate, something acidic. Yeah. Uh, a lot of Spaniards use red wine in it, which is totally fine. Okay. Um, I like a more refreshing style wine, but the idea is you, uh, it's a festive way to drink with your friends, uh, especially at dinner parties or whatnot. So you start away from your mouth and then you pour it and then you extend your hand. So it's, it's, it's oh, this is the best way. So it's a drink and a show. It is, and it's festive. I don't know if you would like to partake, but. I've actually never done this. Oh, I've great. I've always cheered everybody on, but well, I'm like terrified. During this epidemic, you're going to have to keep it even further from your face than usual. All right. And just, the best way to do it is just to watch it come right out the end and not to tip too much because it will come out the top. Okay. So Thanks just right, right there and focus on it. There you go. Keep your eye, there you go, right on there. There you go. Well Not done. quite as neat. Well done. But delicious. 
Yes. Yeah, that's um, fine. People will drink whole bottles of that um, <laughs> and, and repeat and refill and uh, throughout the night. So it's pretty fun to watch. Totally killer for a party. Yeah. That is something that you should pass around while waiting for your paella to cook. Oh, definitely. Definitely. At least have four bottles of wine, though, because the two, first two go quick. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. I love it. Can you tell us a little bit more about the... Okay, so on the back here and how you guys came up with it, what the idea see behind it was. if I got another was. picture here. Yeah, so we wanted a way to cook our paella uh, without being on the ground, but up, and a way to do a fire where we're not ruining anybody's property, you know, we're not leaving burn marks. So we have these steel rings built for us. Um, Mark Fogarty, Fogarty, again, thank you. Uh, pans are from Spain. And then we have this kind of like barbecue set that goes, we put everything right on top of. Um, so the ring has build, all the wood and all the fire in yeah. it. Yeah, so as you can see, we have a large fire. I don't know if we can see that right there. Large fire underneath, heats everything up very well. And then just start cooking our different meats and just what I did here. Oh. Except you get the smoke and the, you know, technique of, Valencia, because this is how the Valencians do it. So that's the, the ultra traditional way. Yeah. And then, are you using different woods, or is there one wood that you like to use? Uh, we use a combination of, we do uh, oak wood, and we'll use some Grenache vines, oh, or yeah. different grape vines. We've gotten so some from Hudson vines. Vineyards. Um, and the cane, to yeah. give a burst of heat, to make a nice soccer out on the end. Um, so we try to develop local wood, as uh, in Spain they use orange uh, trees okay. um, and uh, orange wood and stuff like that to give a sweetness to it. So we are reaching out to Grenache uh, vineyards or other different, um, you know, growers and we get some wood from them and, you know, just keep it local. Yeah, you know, as local as we can. How cool is that? And the, you're saying that the canes are the, the, the fresher wood oh, when you slice, when you put the it in. The prunings. So right. the prunings, when they dry and they, they get bundled, yeah, yeah, we yeah. get a couple bundles of those. And if you just take one bundle at the very end, if you're not getting that uh, sakarat. Then that's what gives you that last burst of heat? Yeah. Got it. So with this is perfect because I don't want sakarat right now. If I get sakarat right now, it's going to block the um, uh, evaporation of the stock. Uh, so you're going to have this fire building and then right now you got it going through the rice but with the rice thing stops or cooks together too fast it blocks and the fire comes out here and burns over here this part's going to get undercooked got it so you keep it low keep it slow so that's part of the reason you want it to simmer yes and yeah. build up slowly okay. yeah and you can if you find that you can take your spoon and find that spot and then give it a little just a little scratch on the pan just to open up flame up to the pan through the rice. Okay. And for those of us that um, don't have a setup like this, how would you take something like this and do it in an oven? So we would take this pan, okay. we would put it right here and All we right. do everything I did. You have your oven set at 375 or 350. Right. Uh, to, you know you know your oven okay. if it's hot or if it's cold. you know weak then you put it in your oven for uh, 20 to 40 minutes. So you put the put the rice in, don't yes. stir it, put the seafood on, give it 20 or 30 minutes. Oh, this one, we will not put the seafood, okay. the shellfish on top first. We will do that separately okay. on, on the pan. Like yes, or if you, you're, you, 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 wanna, you want, you can bring it out 10 minutes before it's done, then put all the shellfish on and okay. slide it back in. Okay. It's up to you. Got it. But then you can also, if you're going to do that, you can also do your uh, shrimp or your gumbas right on the side and your scallops <laughs> or your rockfish or whatever kind of fish you want to put on. is a good time to be cooking that now to put on top of your paella if you want to like to go, you know, over the top, you know, head on shrimp, oh, rock wow. cod, calamari, just boom, put your garlic in there, get your parsley in there, white wine, get it up there, put there it right on top. Like yeah, yeah. You can see everything opening up now. Yeah, I mean, that thing's looking great. It smells great, too. It smells really good. 
right? There you go, guys. Smell-o-vision. Smell-o-vision. <laughs> I love it. I told the guys in the cellar today that, um, that we were doing paella, and they're like, oh, great, another cooking show that we don't get to eat. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm <laughs> eating this one. So they're really excited. You're going to see a whole line of people six feet apart oh, good. waiting for this at right. 1 o'clock. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, they're just like. Um, How am I doing on time? Pretty good. Are we doing good? Yeah. All right. I got. We have 15 minutes or ah. 13 minutes before. This is probably going to be done right at the end. So what I would do after that is I would garnish with my asparagus, with my green onion, some lemons. I you also just wedge the lemon and yeah. Can give that a squeeze. I also brought a uh, house-made lemon aioli today. Oh, yeah. Uh, we do this at the restaurant with every paella, but this is just egg yolks, lemon juice, salt, uh, vinegar, um, a little bit of water, and you just put in your uh, Cuisinart and add oil very slowly to it until it thickens. Well, it looks delicious. And it just really gives a wonderful creamy acidic pop to every bite of your paella. And you just put that on your paella or put it on your plate or wherever you would like it at the end. Give it a dollop. Yeah. And then what about the other peppers? That goes on at the last minute? Yeah, and then I'll put that over the, over the end. Because um, this is already cooked. These are kind of like charred okay. uh, paquillos. And just add another pop of flavor. Yeah, in fact, like these got probably, or just from temperature. So we can kind of sprinkle those on right now. Why not? The more color, the better. Absolutely. And if you want to get uh, a fancy design on it, go for it. I mean, that's the best. I'm just not an artist. Right, where people lay them out. Oh yeah. And it's like a yeah. it's like a mosaic or a painting. Yeah, yeah, super cool. What I love about what Ben does is he'll he'll come make paella on site, and that's incredible. And sometimes. Um, if you're not having a big event, but you're really just trying to feed people. So during harvest, we have a bunch of interns here. We'll have like, I don't even know, 15, 16 people in the cellar. Um, plus it tends to be a busy time of year for us uh, in, the, in the tasting room also. So we'll just get like a paella for 40 people. And he literally rolls up uh, in a van, pulls this perfect hot, ready to go ready paella to go. out, drops it yeah. down with a bunch of lemon wedges and things to put on top and says, see you later, bring me my pan when you're done. <laughs> yeah, Which exactly. Which is really nice. Yeah. yeah. Pie ants can always be brought, brought back to the restaurant or if you really need to me to, I will come and get it. I love it. I love that you do that. Sorry for the interruption, you guys. Uh, I have a question from one uh, attendee asking about the brand and type of sausage you're using. Okay, so this is the uh, Palisos uh, brand Spanish paella. Uh, Spanish paella, Spanish chorizo. And it is a hard and cured chorizo sausage from Spain. And they make a mild and a uh, spicy one. This one is the mild. The other chorizo sausage I put in uh, was something we developed in the restaurant and it is a ground pork Spanish chorizo sausage with, uh, what I got, fennel, cumin, no, cumin, coriander, garlic, smoked paprika, salt, um, yeah, oh, and oregano, oregano. And then we just mix that all together and put it in there as a kind of a patty and then break it all up. So anybody can do that, where you just take ground pork sausage sure. and just... Sure, or that's just yeah, ours, good. you know, you don't have to even add that. You can put, you know, another meat you want, or you can make it with lamb, or you can make it with, you know, traditional rabbit and snails if you want. Just go get some snails from your backyard. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> so the snails that they use in Valencia, are they the ones that you see like in the cages where they're... Yeah, yeah, yeah. harvested, grown snails, um, and then you've got, you put them in live right on top and they do their thing. <laughs> you want to get adventurous? Yes. So we should be getting close to getting some soccer out on this. There. Oh, right yeah. there. It's like a thud. It's not it's so there. tinny. Yeah. 
and we still got some liquid. So this is going to be kind of on the moisture side of our paella. It's going to it's going to still needs about seven to ten minutes. Uh, the, the edges are getting nice and brown and sticky, which is you know that that's going to build the sock rot right down the edge. In the oven, you don't really get a sock rot. You just let it bake. Uh, if you put it um, in just a little bit longer, you'll get it. Uh, but it's kind of harder to get. It'll be it'll be splotchy. Yeah. Like it'll be right here, where this one will be. Hopefully, you know, 70, 60 percent of the pie will have a little sock rot on it. Got it. Yeah. So cool. And where did where did the contraption, the countertop contraption, come from? So these are made in Spain. Um, you can order them online, Amazon, uh, really? Spanish Table. Whole Foods probably, okay. um, and they come in many sizes. Uh, our biggest one will fit a 45 inch pan. Oh wow, on the counter. You can do it on the counter, yeah. That's wild. These, they all have legs and wheels, so you can move them okay. to where you want them. So backyard, countertop. You hook them up to a uh, propane tank, and you just cook through propane. Um, I love it. And uh, yeah. Like I said, though, if you're doing this outside, they make wind guards that you hook onto your paella pan that hang over the flame. Because if a wind comes, it's going to blow the flame right, right out. Because especially if you need that blow like that. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. And uh, I'll cut some uh, lemon wedges here. I'm really excited to see how the, the rosé and the G vineyard, what the favorites are for the pairing. Oh uh, yeah, I think both are going to be good. There's I, I, not a bad rosé or pinot. I've um, had the Albarino, well, you have multiple Albarinos, I've probably tried them all with the paella at Zuzu. Um, and I just, I love the crisp white with it. Uh, so I, I don't personally, um, I tend to go for the, like the really crisp white with the paella, but I think the spice on the G vineyard is going to be really fun. That's going to be great. Yeah. Yeah. Especially, you're going to have that um, the depth uh, of the stock and the sausages right. in there. They really are going to. Just a little bit of a weightier pinot, yeah. a little bit of a spicier pinot. Mm -hmm. It's got that kind of mushroomy black earth kind of spicy core to it. Yeah. Yeah. So every, you can see. Chris, yeah, everything's I mean, bubbling really nice. We're getting cooked solid through here. Um, it's gonna be, and all that liquid is absorbing. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be one delicious pie for those of you who can't enjoy. Virtual. Virtual yes. pie today, but. Well, it's virtually pleasing as well. I mean, that is just oh, it's gorgeous. as pretty as it will taste. <laughs> So I do know that people ask about shellfish that doesn't open. Yeah. What's like, what would be one where you'd look at it and be like, yeah, maybe don't eat that guy. Okay, so here's where you can get torn between. Most of these are really nice and open. Uh, here's one right here, not so open, but it's still open. So, so I, it's got a crack. It's, it's got a crack, open. yeah, but uh, it doesn't want to budge, throw it away. Okay. But if you can just... Yeah, and it's probably okay if it, it's open, but if it doesn't open at all, right to the trash every time. All right. And as you're washing your shellfish and you see an open one, you give it a little tap, and if it comes tight and closes, that's okay. But if you tap it and, and it doesn't play, it doesn't come closed right away, throw it in the garbage. All right. Yeah. Yeah, you want to start with... Fresh. Fresh. Yes, Fresh yes, seafood. yes. And my friends at Osprey got me this seafood this morning. I picked it up right before I came here. Oh, I love those guys. Osprey's a, a fish market that's on um, uh, Highway 29, um, kind of on the northern side of Napa. So, lots of good fresh stuff. Yeah, yeah. We like we try to use our uh, um, local fresh ingredients. You know, like Mary's fatted cat or Mary's. Uh, chicken. Although they're organic. Uh, yes. Uh, for a while we were using, uh, sourcing our chorizo from fatted calf. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because uh, they do a wonderful hung Spanish chorizo, and now we make our own. 
Spanish they have, chorizo. They have rabbit there too, right? They do, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I used this one today because this one's easy to get and I didn't want to use like everything we do, is so we just do everything. <laughs> but we do. Uh, <laughs> I love that you guys house make so much of this, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna try and pick uh, pick Bren, Ben's brain a little bit um, when we get done today and put together a, a, a bit more of a recipe for you so that we know um, kind of how he puts his stock together and some of the um, volumes for different ingredients. So we'll get that up on Facebook. Yes. I will not be able to give you all the stock ingredients because that's the that's that's, that's the secret sauce. The secret yeah. right there. Everything else though, I'll give it to you. No problem. You gotta <laughs> learn your bit technique. Right? Ben, yeah. Chris, start there. Yeah, yes. do we have a oh, question? A, an interesting question, yeah. So uh, do you find wood fire to be more challenging to cook with rather than propane for this? Please explain benefits and cons of the approaches. Okay. Uh, so the first paellas I ever cooked were over wood fire, 100%, and I only cooked them over wood fire. So I learned how to cook over wood fire paellas before I learned the gas. So, so to me, this is this is a little more complex, although I kind of have it down now, but I love working with wood a lot better. Um, I like... I can get my fire going exactly how I want it to be. I can put wood on the side. Like as you see on this picture, I have wood like right on the edge. The wind is blowing that way. It, the wind blows the heat through the paella pan, heating the whole circumference of the pan. Um, these gases, burners burn a little hot and a lot of times I get a little too much scorch uh, or I burn my stock too fast then I have to add more stock to the rice to make sure my rice cooks through. So, um, fortunately I did this about three times before I came here today so I could get the perfect balance. That looks amazing. Which um, I think is coming together. But yes, I love cooking over wood fire much better. And if you have a, a Weber grill, uh, a pan this size, maybe I'd say 22 inches to 18 inches on your Just Weber, you can put and do it on your Weber with briquettes or add uh, wood uh, chips to your briquettes. Don't soak them in water, we're not smoking. We want heat. But then make sure you just have a nice, steady heat uh, while you got your rice in. And if it's too bubbly, just take it off, let your fire cool down, and then add to it. Or if it's not hot enough, take it off, add more heat, put it back on. So it's pretty forgiving if you need to move it on yeah. the grill. Or... Uh, the green egg too. A lot of people cook theirs in the green egg, oh, yeah. which uh, works amazingly well. I think an 18 inch pan is perfect for the uh, green egg. It just fits right in there, holds all that yeah. heat down. You just have to figure out your rice ratio to, I think a, I think an 18 inch pan will cook paella for 10 to, to 12 perfectly. And how and big is this pan? This is 22? This is 22. I made it larger to make it thinner, to cook it faster okay. for us today. Got it. Um, the rice oh, is a Spanish rice. This is the bomba rice. Um, there's, you don't have to get a five uh, kilo bag. You can get a two kilo bag, or actually this is 10 kilos, I'm sorry. Uh, Matisse at Whole Foods has a smaller bag. One bag will be about 12 people. Okay. And I believe that's so the 18 inch pan, 10 to 12 people, two and a half quarts of stock, and then whatever else you want to put in there. All right, but that's usually the ratio two and a half quarts of stock. One, uh, it's a 2.2 kilo. I'm, I'm not, don't quote me on that, but Matisse Bomba rice that's in a, a nice canvas bag like this. Um, and uh, they do a great product, um, and that's the best way to Yes, it's one bag of rice. Not that's about five bags of rice right there. This is. It is smelling so good. It looks awesome. Oh, I think we're. Almost it's amazing there. at the end, like how fast the liquid gets absorbed. Yeah, it's like just a minute ago it was full liquid, right? And you should be able to do this with your paella. I mean, hold it up almost to a, a ninety degree level. You hear a little bit more in there. 
But uh, let me check, check it out. Oh, yeah. So we can see our rice too. Can you get some of the crispies down there? So some, some of this rice looks like it's mostly cooked through. But when you see little let's see this, opaque pieces, like you can tell there's just a little grain, a little yeah. starch left in there. But this, for the most part, looks unreal. Getting so close. I think, I think we can have some out of it right now. Let me grab a plate. Yeah, so let's do that. I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off and let it sit. If you let it sit for about 15 minutes, um, it'll just absorb everything nicely. Um, when you're ready to serve, start from a corner, go right down to the bottom, get the saccharat out, get the saccharat out. We're gonna add our fresh vegetables. Onion. I love all the color. It's so cool. Give it a little squeeze of lemon on there. Hey, Chef. Yes. One of our, our audience members wondering if you're doing to-go orders at, at Zuzu. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I should have mentioned that very early. So we're doing pop-up paellas Saturdays at noon. If you go to the Zuzu website and click on the order button, you can order paellas for Saturday at noon. They're going to be uh, 12 ounce portions in a to-go box. Uh, we'll make it at the kitchen where um, my catering kitchen is. We will transport that. Two of us make the paella and two of us hand them out. So there's four of us in contact at all times. Um, and you can pick them up at Zuzu and they are $12 a box. Awesome. And I believe we're going to be doing empanadas, flans, um, tres leches, um, maybe some bacalao, and other items as well nice. coming up today. I love so, that thank you, I'm Brian. I, I can't believe I didn't mention that at all. But it's on the website, so the menu will rotate and it'll be on the YouTube yes. website. And that's yes. Yes. And okay. hopefully adding other um, items as well, um, and not just solely um, paella. But I don't know. Paella is so good. And is it typically this one that you make? Uh, we're doing it without shellfish. Okay. Uh, it's everything but the shellfish or seafood okay. because... The transport. Yeah, exactly. I don't know when you're going to take it home, when you're going to reheat it, and what you're going to do with it. Got it. Uh, but uh, we're also doing the vegetarian one. So all you vegetarians out there, please feel free to order me. Gluten-free, 100% vegan, uh, aioli on the side. Okay. So your aioli is not vegan, but... If you want to break some rules, they're just in case for the vegetarians. All right, let's check this thing out. Oh, We're here. This is done. I got everything on there, right? Yeah. All right. I think so. Love it. We're gonna go right down to the bottom. Hold on. Okay. All right, guys. Fast to hand bailing. Here we go. All right. This scoop right here, we're gonna turn it upside down. Everybody can get a little glance yeah. of that sakarat right there. So that is your caramelization to the pan. Beautiful, delish. And then, do we have any more uh, silverware in here, Chris? Dollop, dollop, dollop. Oh man. And you are ready to go. Yay! This is beautiful. And like you said, that really uh, caramelized, beautiful saccharin on there, too. Yum. You can see, I'll just move some of this out of the way because I know the guys will be here soon to eat this up. 
see it on the bottom of the pan there. All right, so you have your sakurat right at the bottom, uh, about what, 70% of the pan, I guess, oh, yeah, right there? Sure. Yeah, all yeah. around in here. Yeah. And on the edges, too. And, like I said, the shellfish opens up and cre keeps the stock in it, so you can have a nice, moist clam. Oh, perfect. Chef, this is crazy mm. what a treat today. We're all Thank so excited you. to eat this. I wish that uh, that you were all here with us, but we will do this here Me too. soon. Can't wait to see everybody yeah, again. Yeah, absolutely. We'll have been back with Zuzu Woodfire Paella. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you. And if you have comments, questions, you can put them on the Facebook page or you can shoot us an email. We'd be happy to answer it. And to make sure that you get the paella invitation, please do sign up for... Um, uh, on the Boucher list so that you'll get our emails and you'll see um, different events that we plan to do as we start to open back up and welcome everyone back because we certainly do miss you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Really appreciate you being it's great here. to be Love here. you guys and we'll see you all soon. Thanks again.